chapter 4 of part 3 of Philosophy as a Right of Rebirth by Algus Ustavinus. Chapter 4 Divine Ideas and Symbols The so-called Platonic theory of ideas is not Plato's invention. The concept of the relationship between intelligible archetypes and their images has been central to Egyptian and Mesopotamian thought from its early beginnings. What is new is the rationalization of this theory, and its separation from the initial mythical frame and theurgic integrality, thus adapting it to dialectical logocentrism and to the taste of contemporary sophists. However, if it is reduced merely to the level of an abstract, dianoetic reasoning, and its mental universals, this theory is impoverished and becomes involved in the endless quarrel about realities that cannot be fully revealed to the discursive mind, and therefore appear as logical contradictions. The symbolic language of photagogic visions Images, colours, scents, and liturgical sounds is diminished or neglected in favour of a monopolistic, rational discourse. Although the, sco <clears throat> Although the scope of this discourse is limited, its metaphysical pretensions are absolute. Thus, the whole discussion about ideas becomes too anthropocentric and restricted to the dimension of human speech. This passionate belief in the omnipotent power of rationality and its categories is itself irrational, because an intellectual truth is not available for transmission in any discursive form. <clears throat> the structure of spoken language is unsuitable for expressing certain higher truths and realities. Simplicius, in his commentary on Aristotle's categories, argues that even if the categories are employed semantically to refer to actual things, it is better to view them not as realities, but as conceptual entities, noamata, that symbolize or are images of genuine substances, symbolon usa tes in tois usin usias. Speech is an outermost activity of the soul fallen into embodiment. Therefore, philosophy, restricted to rational, discursive thinking, presents the greatest hindrance to the apprehension of the divine truth and the transcendent forms. Hieroglyphs, medu netta, are symbols and images for contemplation. They function as a means of elevation. In this respect, they are analogous to the Neoplatonic divine synthemes, synthemata, that is, the theurgic tokens of the noetic realm. The Chaldean and Neoplatonic synthemata also signify a symbol used in rituals, because the cosmogenesis itself is staged as a rite performed by the gods. 
the process of descent and ascent by means of symbols, symbola, santhamata, and hieroglyphs, constitutes the way which ba transverses. The soul moves through duat as if crossing the dynamic semiotic field, or the Osirian book made of names and ontological attributes of identity. The manifested reality itself is a construction built up of medu netta. It is only at the level of human senses that the divine words are crystallized into an iconic script and items of sacred art. According to Proclus, who regarded the soul itself as the special token, like the animated statue or hieroglyph of the one, aimed at eventual assimilation with God. Quote, the soul is composed of the intellectual words and from the divine symbola, some of which are from the intellectual ideas, while others are from the divine henads. And we are in fact icons of the intellectual realities, and we are statues of the unknowable Sunthamata. End quote. While understood as a hieroglyph, as a word which comes forth from the mouth of Atum, the Ba may be viewed as a textual element of the larger ontological text, which is Kaperu, the theophanic reality itself. The human Ba is depicted as a figure of a human-headed bird, usually a falcon, thus becoming a sign image moving within the initiatory text, constituted of other figures, symbols and images, since the ascent takes place through the disclosure of divine names, the elements of divine speech, Meduneta. As Proclus says, Every god is without figure, even though it is viewed with a figure. For the figure is not in it, but is part of it. Since the seer is incapable of seeing without figure, that which is with figure, but that which is seen in a figured way, corresponds to the nature of the seer. Therefore the soul, seeing the figures depicted in the imagination and being struck by their beauty, is admiring those ideas from which they are derived. However, the highest initiation into the transcendence of Amun or Atum takes place not by means of rational discrimination or intellection, but by means of all-surpassing silence. Quote, Initiation, Moesis, and Revelation, Epoptia, are themselves symbols, Sumbalon, of the ineffable silence and of the unity with the intelligible by the method of mystic revelations. End quote. According to S. Rapa, quote, the highest form of Neoplatonic hermeneutics might posit philosophy as, in the last result, mere fiction. End quote. This radical attitude is established by Damascius, who criticised 
not only the metaphysical premises of Procline philosophy, but discursivity as such, in the attempt to promote a radical, non-dual way to the darkness of Nun, the ineffable. Quote, now, knowledge takes place by means of intuitive seeing, or by means of syllogism, or it is just a diluted and obscure sort of vision that sees things from a distance, as it were, but which nevertheless relies on logical necessity, or else knowledge is simply a specious form of reasoning that doesn't even have access from afar, but simply conceives of certain ideas on the basis of other ideas. By means of such thinking, we habitually recognize material order or privation, or in general, that which has no reality. End quote. However, as T. Burkhart pointed out, even if spirituality, understood both in an apophatic sense and as a perennial wisdom which transcends its formal vehicles, is independent of forms, this in no way implies that it can be expressed and transmitted by any and every sort of form. One should add that without form, it cannot be transmitted at all, because the transcendent divine reality is above any human comprehension and experience. If the style of sacred art, which sustains the spirituality of every traditional civilization, is perpetuated by the power of the immanent spirit, and therefore cannot be imitated from outside, it means that the quote-unquote theory of ideas may be expressed in different ways, supported by different revelations. The Egyptian tradition of Medu Neta could not be translated into the rational discourse of the Greeks without losing its essential characteristics and esoteric meanings, imbued in the forms, shapes, colours and accompanying rituals themselves. T. Burkhardt says, quote, Through its qualitative essence form, has a place in the sensible order analogous to that of truth in the intellectual order. This is the significance of the Greek notion of eidos. Just as a mental form, such as a dogma or a doctrine, can be the adequate, albeit limited, reflection of a divine truth, so can a sensible form retrace a truth or a reality which transcends both the plane of sensible forms and the plane of thought. Reader's note. I'll read that again for our appreciation. Through its qualitative essence, form has a place in the sensible order analogous to that of truth in the intellectual order. This is the significance of the Greek notion of eidos. Just as a mental form, such as a dogma or a doctrine, can be the adequate, albeit limited, reflection of a divine truth, so can a sensible form retrace a truth or a reality which transcends both the plane of sensible forms and the plane of thought. Mm. 